Radio Free America, and this is Uncle Sam with music and the truth until dawn. Right now, I've got a few words for some of our brothers and sisters in the occupied zone. The chair is against the wall. The chair is against the wall. John has a long mustache. John has a long mustache. It's 12 o'clock, Americans, another day closer to victory. And for all of you out there on or behind the lines, this is your song. <laughs> Hey, welcome everybody to another special edition, I guess, of the Daily Gun Show, but it's not really. It's more of a uh, day two, day one of the Wanamaker uh, Tulsa Gun Show, Tulsa Arms Show, uh, 2019. Uh, they do this show twice a year, so I guess I should say April 2019. And uh, it's the end of the first day. It's the night of sa Saturday night after the first full day of the show. And we have a bunch of people from gunchannels.com. Gun Channels is a community we built a while back where people get together who uh, create content and collaborate and network. And a bunch of people from Gun Channels showed up at Wanamaker uh, for well, multiple times. Everybody's been there different times here. We'll talk to everybody. We'll introduce everybody. Everybody has their own channels. Everybody's doing their own thing. And what they have in common is an interest in sharing our Second Amendment. And uh, everybody can uh, introduce themselves and uh, chat a bit as we chat tonight. This is an uh, interactive effort in new media. So if you're watching this on gunchannels.com, where we simulcast everything we do, we encourage you to uh, use the comments there, say uh, any questions you might have or uh, clarify anything. And if you're using the platform that hates our guns and hates the laws that we find useful, then uh, you know we don't know you're out there until you say something. So let us know. We'll uh, be dropping links to the various channels uh, that are represented here tonight. And uh, I guess we'll go from our left to our right, starting with uh, Armentia, that guy's wife. Thanks for joining us tonight. Ah, oh, thank you for inviting me. You bet. And, uh, you're up from Texas, and it sounds like uh, you're at the lower level. We've got everybody kind of staged all around tonight. Yes, um, I am from Texas, and right now I'm downstairs with this wild, crazy group. So, yes. Sounds good. And this, I guess, let me start off doing this too. This is your third show? Uh, yes, this is my third show. Um, my first show was last April when I came and met up with my other gun gals. So, which was... And that's, that's when gun gals started, right? I, well, they actually started in the end of January, first part of February. So we hadn't been together long. Um, right. Well, I guess that cemented it. Y'all got to meet and hang out. Yes, yes. Right on. And, well, thanks for jumping in tonight. Let me keep going. We got Clover jumping in from Texas also. Thanks for joining. Hey, what's up? Good to be here. Had to uh, had to miss last night with uh, being so tired and all. Yeah, no worries. Now, this is your fancy new phone? Yeah. I hate to tell you, this is uh, 10 times clearer than any other cell phone that's out there right now. This is amazing. Really? What's really? this one again? Um, the Galaxy 10 S10 Plus. Crazy. I can't wait for these things to be on Amazon so I can drop links and get a chunk of the like money that it cost to buy. Right. Them. Yeah, I'll take I'll take four percent of a grand. Yeah. But these are worth it. Wow, is that a clear? I don't know if you guys can tell when you get home or people watching. Wow. So all right, fine eight. Thanks for jumping in. Oh, I guess Clover came up from Tech. Hey. You guys, you're how many hours away? Eight about hours? Si about six. Yeah, about, about, well, maybe yeah. six or seven. Yeah. And this is third show, fourth show? Um, I think it's fourth for me, I think. Yeah. And then Fine Eight, thanks for jumping in. How far did you come? How many shows? Uh, first time here, about uh, 670 miles or so. And that's each way, so appreciate that. That's a lot of effort. Has the show been worth the, the uh, trip so far? Um, in all honesty, it's kind of been a bit overwhelming with just the amount of stuff just to look at. Go very, very gracious way of saying that they're all disappointing. But yeah, I hear you. That's why I didn't bother showing up. Uh, Foose, thanks for jumping in. How far? How many shows? Yeah. How's it going? Good. How far did you drive? How many shows have you been to? Uh, this is my fifth Tulsa show. Uh, drove about three hours one way. Um, and I picked up an Ishabor uh, Enfield, Enfield uh, 
A2? Yeah, 2A in 308. So that's kind of cool. So, yeah, good stuff. Right on. Now I am going to keep going left to right, but then some of you'll have to let us know who we're missing, who's not actually you know, on a phone. So Dano up from a hotel room, kind of right watching to, from to, above in the Overwatch position. Two, two, how many, how many two, shows? Two, two, six how is right next to me. How many shows? How many? How far away? Uh, uh, this. Go ahead. Who are we going? No, is it to me you. or Dano? Dano. Okay. Oh, it is I to me. Okay. Awesome, uh, this. So I've been to like all of them. Get with them. Get with the system here. Get with the program. We're going Dano right now. We're coming back to the people that ain't on. Oh come on! I'm we sorry. got a system here. We got a regiment, regimen, regimen, regime that we have to maintain. Otherwise, certain people will freak out. So uh, Dano. All right. Uh, third third show. Uh, not necessarily all, all all consecutive, and um and approximately ten hours to get here. Ten hours, and this time you did it in one trip instead of two days. Well, I did take two days, but um, uh, that, that, that was optional. That was not because I had to. Oh. All right. Well, we'll get into that. Mr. Wright, how many shows? How far? Uh, I think this is my fourth show. I don't drive much. It's about a four and a half, five hour drive up from, uh, I don't know, just outside of Dallas. And I picked up a, um, let me see, well, Foose. Boost me on the Ishapur. <laughs> so my immediate response was to buy a Winchester 75 and a Remington 521. That don't come with mags. Yeah, neither one came with mags. But <laughs> I can always... Are you talking to the king of mags? I have mags. That's true. He had mags coming out. All right, well, we're going to get into guns that have been purchased. Next up, I don't know which to go to. I guess I'll go to Obnoxious, even though he's on, like, three cameras right now. Hey G, thanks for having me. Yep. Um, I'm, I've, I've, uh, um, some, I picked up a hitchhiker along the way, and apparently he's still following me. This is uh, my first show. I spent uh, about 16 hours drive time, but it took uh, about 18 hours total. It was three hours from my house to pick up Sarge. Say hi, roll call. And then uh, I picked up Sarge at his place, and we drove the rest of the way out here and got in about 2.30 Friday morning. And this is both of our first shows. Right on. Well, I think right there, that's a whole other thing to talk about because that's uh, pretty cool. Then we got Sarge, I guess, jumping in next. And Yes, sir. Yep. I'm here. Well, I appreciate the, the same thing. We kind of got yours from Obnoxious. But, yeah, thanks for jumping in, and we'll uh, – but the, it was, whose car was it, or did you rent a car? No, we rented. Yeah, we rented his truck. Okay, so um, well, I'll we'll just since we just got here, basically we'll jump back to Snob, probably the closest, maybe not. No, actually, no, you're the second closest. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, you bet. Yeah. Took me an hour to get here, and I'm driving home now. And I couldn't even tell you how many shows I've been to. I've been coming since I was a little kid. Well, that's what I was going to say. You probably got where everybody else has mileage on you. You've got a number of years at the show, so that's going to be pretty neat. Um, then now let's try to figure out who all is not holding a camera. So we had Nut before, who's the closest. I think he lives like you could probably shoot at the building from the show or from his place, right? Yeah, like I could walk to the show. And then, uh, again, you've been going your whole life, but uh, I don't know. Um, thanks for jumping in. Well, uh, I don't know. Is there anybody else who written out there, all out there? <clears throat> We're under a truck now. <laughs> there may have been an incident. Uh, we're okay. We're good. I dropped my phone and went under Wright's truck. So, um, roll call. How far is, did he? They come? Did they fly this time or drive? They drove. I don't know where he's at. Okay. Two? So, we, like, cycle. No, call. they flew. So they flew. Okay, because I was going to say no, that. Roll they, call they, drove. Cycle flew right, and is yeah. he out? Is he around? 
I don't know. Yes, he's he's talking to us. Uh, he wants to talk right now. You have anything to say? Wow. Yeah, we're asking how many shows say hey to G. and how far they drove. Say hey to G. Okay, we're asking how many shows they've attended and how far they travel. How many shows? How many shows have you attended and how far did you travel? How far did we travel? Yes, to the show. How many miles? How many hours? We started. We got up at two thirty a.m. Yeah. We got on the plane yeah. and we got here at three thirty. Okay, about how far? No, no, three thirty. No, about how far? Oh, well, because they took us to they took us to Chicago and then to Dallas and then to Oklahoma. So it's like two thousand miles. Yeah, so a couple thousand miles. Yeah. <laughs> it's twenty-seven hours for me to drive here because we did that last year. Oh, piece of cake. Uh, there you go. I know. Right so now, did we miss anybody? Is there? Where'd roll call go? Yeah. Roll call. Roll call's here. And then roll call. Did you, did you end up driving or did you fly? Roll call drove. And then did he go around Illinois or? Was, uh, little. Twelve. It's it was supposed to be twelve hours, but. I'll be honest, I sped through Missouri, so it gave us 11. Did you go through Illinois or did you go around? Did you go through Illinois around? We had to go through Illinois. It was the quickest route. Okay. If we went through Indianapolis, we would have added an extra hour, maybe two and a half hours. Yeah, so we had to, we actually had to go. I never, I got only got out of the car once in Illinois. It was just the fuel. Oh, that was it. It was in Southern Leave a bunch yeah. of Glocks on the side of the road next to the pool. Yeah. So just you and a bunch of Glocks on the side of the road? <laughs> wow. He drove through the belly of the beast. The belly of the beast. I got to do it again uh, on uh, all right. Sunday. So where are we going to take it tonight? We've got a bunch of people from all over the country. Everybody can mute up again. And uh, I'll try to play host and bring you in one at a time so that it's not crazy. Uh, with the background noise, but any of you who are got quiet background noise, feel free to jump in anytime. So uh, uh, we've got uh, kind of went round robin there. We've got people that have been going literally their whole lives, dozens and dozens of years, decades. Uh, we've got people that are attending for their first time. We've got people that almost literally walk across the street to the show. We've got people that are within an hour, and then we've got people that drove. Well, there's Grim. How far is Grim Grim Drive, and how many shows? He won. He wants to know how far you drove. Well, you I drove talk. from Chicago. What is that? Seven hundred. I don't know. It, it took eleven hours through the right rain and fog again. Yeah. Okay. And how many shows? This is my second. Yeah. With my brothers. With his brothers. But not channel partners. But not channel partners. That's that's another issue. And we've also got. We've got Jim. You want to be on camera or no? Uh, sure, why not? All right. We've got Jim. Howdy, fellas. Do you want to know uh, how many shows? Uh, this is my first show in Oklahoma, and we drove about 460 miles to get here. Right on. So are we missing anybody else? Your audio is clear, perfectly clear, by the way. Uh, everybody's quiet now. Uh, Giz Gizzard was here. But I think he, oh, yeah. he might have gone up. He might have pulled a ninth strike. He might have gone up to his room. Oh, he pulled it. They're saying he pulled a ninth strike. But we also have we have Cindy. Okay, so Gizzard says from the chat room out there, where you okay. missing the interactive thing? He says he's in his car out there. He just doesn't want to stand up. Well, I barely even slept. I dozed off for like 30 seconds. So I tell you what, why doesn't somebody, you guys take it upon yourselves, some of you that are standing there next to each other, one of you drop out, only one, and then let Gary jump in since he's not right there with you because he is out there and he'll jump in, I'm sure. Copy that. I'll, uh, I'm out. You're out? I'll okay. be right here with you. So okay. Gary says 200 miles from him and uh, or for him, no, and no, we'll, no, he'll tell us in a minute how many shows. So, um, Thanks. So um, I guess I was saying we've got people from all over the place doing all different kinds of things. I guess we really didn't get even the channels, but we've got channels just about as diverse people that have been doing it for a while to people that are just getting going to people in the middle somewhere. Um, how about instead of having to call on everybody and take forever to do every question, 
what if I say, did anybody meet anybody new this year? A new contact that looks like a good potential? Just uh, <laughs> jump in. I'll deliver the... Hey, Gary. Hello. So I got your thing from the text out here. You got 200 miles. How many shows, though? This is my third. Right on. Um... So I was just saying, anybody got any new contacts or meet somebody that they hadn't met before at the show this year? Um, do you want new contacts? Not really. Did I meet anybody new? I met everybody new. Well, okay. Um, but I, I'm I, I, I saw I, Andrew I, just like, go or brand, brand somebody new didn't, didn't know him. I guess I was thinking more like people at the show, vendors or tables or manufacturers or. Yeah, I I did. I've got I've got some. So I had quite a few interesting conversations. Um, I, there's I did something this year that I haven't done. That's what it's all about in a way is is trying something new, right? And so I had. I started taking some pictures of some guns on some tables, and then I noticed on Instagram people were requesting some other stuff. So, uh, you know, kind of went around and more or less asked some of the other guys there, hey, have you seen this? Have you seen that? And then went and uh, and did that. So I've spent I spent quite a bit of time today at, um, I don't know how you would put it, like collector's tables, people that that bring their collections, and it's not like they don't sell them or they don't trade them right but that's why they're there they're there to work on their collection so they bring it to show it off and then they also trade for things they need or they don't have and that sort of thing um and one thing that i had to it one thing that i had to adapt with that and this is where the stories and the conversations that were interesting come into play is i had to adapt and i could just go up when you go up with um a company you're dealing with a business okay and when you're used to SHOT Show and you're used to NRA, um, that's fine because that's pretty much what that's what's there, right? It's different here because you've got those regular people that just have their collections. So and I had to kind of modify the way that I started the conversation with them. And, and basically, it went something like, hey, we're working media for the show. Uh, we're promoting the show, but... You know, and we would like, and I'd like to take some pictures of your stuff to help promote the show. And, you know, if you want, I can, you know, plug you, promote you as well, but I don't have to. And I don't have to get you on camera and I don't have to put prices on stuff or, you know, say what table number you are even. Just that these particular items are at the show. Um, and basically tell them that I was willing to do whatever, whatever made them comfortable as long as I could get the the footage right the, the pictures of the video or whatever and that led into uh, conversations that they didn't want to record or do on camera obviously but it led into interesting conversations uh, i met a lady matter of fact with the cult pythons i took a picture of the most unbelievable collection of uh her and her husband of cult snake guns i've ever seen i mean she, she had one they had one python which i think i took four or five pictures of pythons they probably had at least 20. They probably had that many anacondas, and they probably had that many cobras. It was um, it was insane. And to hear their story, she started off telling me that her and her husband had been coming to that show for 30-something years, ever since they'd been married, and they'd been married 30-something years. And she had came, been going to the show uh, and actually sitting up, right, at a table uh, with her dad even before then. So... Um, kind of like Nut and, and some of the other ones in Snob, you know, she's been uh, you know, she's been at the at the show and actually a part of the show, not just visiting for years and years. And then there was the guys, uh, the guy, the Polish guy, uh, that was a little hard to understand. But um, you know, talking about his story and the uh, collector group he was in and all of that, again, that was something he didn't want to be on camera. He didn't want to record even record the conversation, but. It's just cool. I mean, I can tell those stories and talk about the conversations we had and the cool people that was there. Uh, and sometimes that's that's just as good, you know, as getting the footage or the or the recording from the people themselves. Well, yeah, especially because um, it's not like an either or, right? If they say no, it's not like you had to walk away. You can take a couple of pictures and make something like a slideshow and narrate it or something. 
Are you looking at how clear your video is coming through? I'm sorry, G. I had I had uh, the doctor in my ear. What did you say? Oh, I was saying uh, that. Um, well, I don't know. I was just asking you if you were looking at his camera to see how clear your your. I can see it on I can see it on mine, uh, yeah. and it's it's freaking outstanding. Uh, his uh, on on obnoxious is not that good. Like but let me tell you let me tell you something about the about this phone that I didn't notice until I've had it for less than a week, right? And I have not noticed this until I got to Tulsa. But instead of it saying 4G, it says like 5GE or something up in the corner. Mm -hmm. So I think it's I think it's I think part of the clarity is that well the camera and all is obviously good. We know that from what we talked about with Instagram and stuff earlier. But I think that I'm getting I'm on a faster network. Does that make sense? And so it's able to push that higher resolution better. Yeah. Well, whenever you get near a big town, you get better odds for good connections, especially if there's yeah. like tech or like you got good industry in that town. So they're going to have money for good in for good infrastructure. Travis yeah, right. talking about five. He said five should be amazing once it's like you know once everything's moved up to five. Yeah. Well, this that may be sense. a pre. This may be a precursor to what we got to look forward to then. Yeah. Now, yeah. Clover, I was, I was wondering. Go, go ahead. Don't mute it because I'm just riding on yours. Oh. Um. I was just wondering, those pythons that you saw, was that the ones that I pointed you at? Was that? I think so. You said, that, yeah, you said it was over behind the holster sign. Go over there. Yeah, sure was. Yeah. And yeah, good lead. I couldn't remember who pointed me, but yeah. Yeah, and he's yeah, he's, he's absolutely he's right. They were, I, I pointed them at that, and then I went over again to look at them, and all I saw was their stainless ones. They had a full case. Um, sitting on top of their table of stainless snake guns. And then when I went over and looked at it again, they had another full case, at least, of blue snake guns. It was it was amazing. Oh, yeah, it was. I couldn't imagine the amount of money just in Colt Pythons and Anacondas they had. I guess I could be screen sharing what you guys are talking about there. Well, and we know from, um, I don't remember what show it was, but we know that, um, you know, some of those collections <laughs> that they show up with are, are literally millions of dollars worth of guns. We know that because the one dude that came in and just bought out the, you know, another dude's entire collection. Well, I did see a double barrel shotgun that was literally $85,000 was what they had listed at it. Was that just because of like a, how fancy or like expensive it was, or was that because somebody owned it or it did something awesome? I don't. They didn't have anything listed about how you know anybody who had it. It was just very fancily engraved, and then uh, it was a real nice shotgun. Well, didn't you say too, snob? That in, there was somebody downstairs, and I think I walked by that, but I didn't pay any attention. That had a whole table of a uh, full auto stuff. That wasn't me. Somebody told me that. I uh -huh. heard it. Yeah, I can't remember who it was that told me that. I was going to actually look for that tomorrow and see if I could get some pictures. Uh, there was a guy up on the, uh, towards the opposite end of the main floor, opposite end of the pit that had like uh, a CAR, um, you know, a lot of uh, original M16s in that. Well, I think I originally was asking, since we got dead air, I was asking if anybody made any contacts or met, hooked, met, met anybody new or, you know, anybody um, out there. Yeah. Oh. We, Go ahead. Uh, fine. Okay. Oh. Um, yeah, I got to meet uh, Rob, uh, Rob Leahy from uh, Simply Rugged Holsters. I've been wearing one of his uh, belts for about 10 years or so. I've been using his uh, concealment holsters for... About the same time, uh, yeah, just kind of a real nice, personable, uh, chatty person. Found out that his father and mother were both from uh, from Minnesota, so that was pretty pretty neat. Now, did he have anything like hats or shirts or patches or keychains or anything like as a fan that you could get to like show off his? 
brand or his logo? Um, not really. He does um, have like just simple uh, like leather billfolds that are stamped with his uh, Maker Mark. It's that kind of um, generic leather stamp where it's that uh, kind of scalloped border pal pattern, but it has like Maker and then the person's name on it. And that's stamped on pretty much every holster and belt he makes. All right, well, Armenthia, you were about to say something? Did you meet, meet anybody new? Um, I actually did, um, but it was... She makes uh, custom jewelry out of ammo, um, and she actually uh, is going to be the jewelry... Or she's going to provide all the jewelry for the fashion show that they'll do at NRA the end of the month. I know that's a little outside of the gun stuff, but... Um, that was pretty awesome. And she made a point to talk about hiding Hilda, uh, who does conceal carry bags and such, uh, which would be awesome. And made a point to, uh, to make sure that we were in contact with hiding Hilda. So I thought that was pretty awesome. Did you have a bunch of time to walk around today or were you doing other stuff today or was we it like looking for new people? I did walk around. I actually met several new people. Um, there is um, a guy. He's a young guy. He's like 23. And he does uh, metal art. Um, that I'm going to do an interview with tomorrow. And then, um, of course, I met some of the same people from, from last year. Uh, of course, I had to make sure that I stopped by and said hi. And then there's a lady that... Um, makes uh, custom jewelry also so say so you take your your daughter or whatever out uh, shooting for the very first time her very first uh, um, shot she fires off she can take that casing and make a custom piece of jewelry to commemorate you know that that event which is something you know that that you would be able to keep forever and be able to say hey this is from when I did whatever, whatever, which is pretty freaking awesome. You know, it's kind of, yeah, I'm, I'm something a dude, that's got a that story sounds behind awesome it. to me. I mean, that's got to be the mm -hmm. same for a girl, right? Getting something like that from her mom or her dad or grandpa or grandma. Right. See, I think that's freaking cool. Um, also, what she was talking about, because she does custom jewelry, like, um, so say, say I shoot 380. So women specifically or especially i guess um when they want like ammo jewelry and stuff like that and i didn't realize this but most of them want it in the in the caliber that they actually shoot which is freaking cool because i i would have never thought that i've been like oh hey this is cool i like this but they're very specific. This is what I carry. This is what I shoot. This is what I want my stuff in. Well, that makes sense because half the time you ever see like a keychain, it's like here's your 44 Magnum keychain. Be on your way. Just because it was mm -hmm. big or it was cheap or yeah, that's kind of neat. You brought up that uh, you had to meet or you wanted to meet the people from last year. And that's, I guess, one of the reasons I was asking because, of course, people that are there for the first time, I'm guessing, are going to meet people new. But that's part mm -hmm. of the skill right or sort of the, mm -hmm. the scheduling or the balance is keeping up with your old contacts and giving them an appropriate amount of time without just visiting them because otherwise you're just visiting them and unless they're paying all your bills then you know you're burning time to meet new people so that can be more and more challenging as you have more and more people at the show sometimes you literally got to duck down an aisle because you got three people that you know down that aisle and you don't want to spend that rest of the afternoon down it you know Right. Um, I know Liz did uh, an interview with Camille Conceal, uh, who does um, conceal carry purses and stuff. And so um, she actually had uh, emailed us back and forth on our Gun Gals Facebook page. And so we had to make a point and stop by there because when um, Liz did her review of the conceal carry purse that she got from there, um, she was very honest about it. And 
uh, Rhonda with Camille's Conceals came back and was like, you know, I was watching her video and I'm glad she was so honest, but there's a piece missing off of her bag that would make that so much easier. And when we stopped by and told her who we were, I mean, they were just so uh, grateful to have us there. And she actually gave me like four of the little um, pieces that go on the zipper that were missing off of Liz's bag so that I could mail them to her. Oh, the so, little zipper pulls that make it so you don't have to like fish for that little metal part. Exactly. And yeah. it's, I mean, it's, it's long and I mean, you just grab it and pull and it just, I mean, it's such a smooth pull, um, which was an issue that uh, Liz had when she did her review and stuff. So she's like, Hey, you know, there's a reason that's not working for you. We've got to fix that. So, All right, so I'm guessing I'm going to talk to Gary here, but I'm going to come back to the girls because I wanted to find out if you girls walked around together because you just met each other in real life. And that's obviously you want to hang out a bit, but uh, you also potentially wanted to cover as much ground as possible. So I'm going to come back to that one after we hit Gary, and then I'm going to give one for everybody, including like Wright and Nut, if you're out there, Sarge, you know, all the people that aren't listening right now. What are some things that we can start to do to create traditions? Assuming that this is something that we continue to do and we do it twice a year and, you know, our intent is to do something for the show and for the Second Amendment, for the community, but we also want to have fun and, you know, have fun, right? So what are some things that we might be able to do to, uh, to you know, at the show when we have an opportunity to all get together and, uh, you know, take it to another level where we're not just... Oh. You know, a bunch of people on a forum that meet up and take a bunch of group selfies and then go home and talk about it. But instead, you know, what else can we do? So anyway, I'm going to throw that out there so people can start cooking on that one. And Gary, uh, this isn't your first time at the rodeo. Did you uh, have a productive show or I know you got some great picks? I think today is one of my best days, actually. And the only reason I couldn't get more interviews in the can is because the show was so busy. That every time, you know, I'd talk to people and they'd say, come back in the afternoon and I'd come back and they were still busy. You know, where the crowd would normally dwindle off in the afternoon, it wasn't dwindling. I did manage to catch a couple of them right before closing time, but there's several I'm following up with in the morning. And there was at least one, I was interviewing one guy and somebody else came up to me and they said, hey, when you get done, come down, talk to me because I'd like you to come do this at my booth. That's never happened before. So stuff like that is really cool. I think people are starting to see the value in what we're doing. Yeah, you know, they set up at a table at a booth, or sorry, they set a table up at a show like this, and then you know they show up and they bring their their people and they take time away from whatever it is they do if they got a nine to five or if it's just time in the shop working on whatever's they're working on. And they're, you know, they're, they're spending their time there that weekend. So, and they're putting some effort into their display. And the people that see that display are limited to the human beings that would pay for admission and then walk through that show and then walk down that aisle and then turn their head in their direction, you know, and then not be talking on their phone or looking past them at what's in the next aisle, right? So they've got a very limited number of people potentially. I mean, it's a concentrated number of people who are probably interested in their product. So it's, it's not a bad deal for the, for, the, for the vendor, but when you come up with a camera and you offer to take all of that stuff they put all that effort into and archive it and distribute it, you're doing them a service because if they spent $10 on that display or if they spent 100 or a 1000 you're giving them more and more reach and you're potentially giving them something that they can use on their website that isn't just, a nut. who's fucking not muted? Are you serious? Come on. Probably Gary. Gary? Yeah. So, uh, um, oh, yeah, it was Gary. So, uh, you know, you're putting something out there that has their display in it. And I'm just thinking as you're talking that that's, uh, you know, another benefit that hopefully we're able to offer. And I don't know if it's necessarily something you got to explain to them, but maybe if they're a little bit hesitant, you know, that's a way to help win them over if they're ever, if it's something, every once in a while you see something you really want to review and they're hesitant, you know, so then it's worth having a couple of tricks to try to, you know, point, knock them over the, the balance to, to agree to do something. 
All right. Was Gary, were you done or do you want to, did you have more to talk about? Uh, the only other thing I could add was the location of the table this year made it a lot easier to reach people because we had a lot <coughs> more people who saw us. And uh, therefore, I think we had a lot better visibility and where we didn't necessarily have the room to all sit down and everything, but the, but the traffic fire was way more than we normally used to have. And yeah. people were actually stopping and watching and looking at what we had to offer. I'm going to keep going with this, and then when we're done, we'll go back to the table. Because, I, yeah, that's something that I think we could probably all chat about. Our chat, add into, put add, what the word, we can all contribute to that one. So, um, Snob, did you want to chime in? You've obviously been to the show for a while, but uh, this time, it was this the first time you're going, like, as your channel, trying to, you know, create... Region. No, November was the first time I went as like media as a channel and doing that okay. stuff and doing interviews. That's the first time I'd ever been anywhere to do interviews. Okay. But no, I had some interesting things happen. For one, I was getting some of my camera stuff out of the car and this lady in her 70s and she was, I'm calling her a little old lady. Her, her name was Barbie, but she was as sweet as can be. She's like asking me what I was doing. I was explaining to her what I was doing. She goes, well, do you tape little old ladies? I said, well, I sure will. And she's been coming to the show. I think she actually said in the video 17 years, but I guess she's been, it's not, I mean, this is like her 17th show or something, but maybe she doesn't come to every show. That's how I understood it. Because she said her son's 40 now. And whenever he was six, she would put him a rug under the table and he would sit on that rug and play with his little cars during the show. <laughs> but so I, I, I mean, what she did wasn't really interesting to me, but I kind of took a different approach because I'm doing a video that's going to kind of uh, promote the show more. And I'm just doing a bunch of footage of just like, tables and stuff just taking some video with a gimbal on the tables I so i went it. ahead and i went ahead and just got an interview with her just talking about her experience at the show down through time i'm gonna try to find a few more people and just kind of splice that in the video as it goes along there's parts and stuff of it so that was pretty neat and you know that, i was I just really shocked like, i really like that idea that's really uh, sounds cool i'm totally stealing that idea uh-huh uh-huh <clears throat> Well, maybe yeah. that's the kind of thing we can do. Like, what if uh, one one time we? I'm going to steal for the mic for a second. One time we went to uh, NRA show 2010 in North Carolina, in Charlotte, North Carolina, and we went out there. And Angie hadn't done very many interviews yet. She had been doing them, but not. She wasn't comfortable. So um, I suggested, well, just ask the same question to everybody because it might be interesting to see you know, everybody's different, you know, what's different about everybody's answer. And she basically went up and, and explained like, I'm new to CCW. I just got my permit. I live in Arizona. I'm a mom. What would you recommend? And then she went to like SIG and Ruger and I don't know, whoever went to all the different companies. And it was really neat because, you know, it was just every company was like, you're a lady, so you want this, or you're a mom, so you want this, or, you know, like they were all like looking, you know, looking her up and down and saying, this is what you want. And then she got to the last one, I think it was, at least the last one we put in the video. And Sig said something like, something more like, well, what's what What have you shot before? Like, what experience do you have? Like, what do you like? And that was just amazing to see, like, you know, the same thing, the same thing, the same thing, and then something totally different. Now, that's not the only way that it might play out. But I just thought, you know, we had no idea that it would even have a result like that. I just thought it was going to be an easy way for her to just ask the same question all the time. So anyway, I think how neat would it be? I was suggesting this at Shot Show if everyone were to end every interview with what Second Amendment organizations do you support, and then just as a project, as a group, I guess I should say, we could literally all just contribute that little slice of each video and have one massive video of all these different people. The beginning of the video where they say, "Hi, I'm so and so with such and such company." And then at the end, and you know, and this splice in, and we support Gun Owners of America, or we support FPC, or we support Second Amendment Foundation, or whatever happens to be. And then have like, you know, we all contribute to one big video of like what Tulsa can, you know, what Tulsa finds important, you know, what, what Tulsa values or something like that. But that's just an idea of like something that we could each contribute to. I keep saying we like I'm there. We, what you all could do to make us have more stuff to watch. Anyway, I cut somebody off, and I'll let whoever it was have the mic again. I think it was snob. Yeah, I was just – the only other thing is I had 
Well, I was walking around with Sarge this morning. I spent most of my morning just walking the show. Didn't even have my camera or nothing. Just trying to meet people and, you know, get to talk to people and see about doing interviews and stuff like that. And then Sarge introduced me to the guy from Wild West Guns out of Las Vegas. He said he talked to him at SHOT Show and introduced him and, you know, he recognized him and stuff. So I went ahead and interviewed with him. But when I went to go do the interview with him, there was another guy there at his booth talking to him that has some suppressor company, and I don't remember what he named, what he called it. But anyways, he's like talking to me and just asking everything. He's like, man, I'd love for you to come, you know, see us. At, he asked, well, we got to talking about NRA, that I'd be at NRA. He's like, yeah, I'd love for you to come see me at NRA. We'll shoot a video, you know, blah, blah, blah. So that was pretty cool. And then I also interviewed a rifle company that makes like an $8,000, basically, a, it was a military it was a, what do you call it, when they put it up for test with the military or whatever? So it was an It was a barrel. modular bolt system. Yeah, yeah, that's what the word I was looking for. But, uh, so anyways, it was that rifle, and uh, they're going to be at NRA. He's like, man, come back and see us at NRA. We'll have a lot bigger booth and all that. So that was kind of cool. Other than that, that's all I got on that. Okay, well, anybody else that uh, was there want to throw in if they had success or failure with uh, meeting people? Because we had people last year that were having some issues. And one of the things that we do this get-together for is so that we can uh, find out if someone's having issues so that we can help offer advice or counsel or coach tomorrow, right? So you know, either way, if anybody has an experience to throw in there, let's do it. Uh, I kind of – go ahead. I kind of piggybacked on uh, Sarge. He was going to go do a couple of couple of interviews. He went to uh, when you the say piggyback, does... like you came up and Bidened him while he was doing his thing, or no, not not at that <laughs> that time. I I Bidened him earlier this week. So, but uh, I uh, he was going to do a couple interviews, and this is obviously my first anything. Sarge went to Shot Show this year, and uh, so I kind of went with him, and he was going to do a couple of interviews and I kind of hung with him and while he did those and I kind of took video of of what he was taking video of when he did it so Sergeant and I will probably release two very similar videos I'll let him get his out and then I'll put mine out sometime later but I, I used uh, what I learned from him doing those two and I went to a booth that was cold fire I uh, got the card up in, up in the room, but it was Cold Fire Weapons Training, I think. Cool Fire Trainers. They, cool Fire Trainers. And they actually make uh, a little CO2 insert that you put in your, in your pistol so that you're, you can have uh, actual kind of like live fire training sure. with, uh, with no live fire. And that was pretty cool. And I did an, I did an interview with them and, and got a video from them that I'm planning on put. That'll be my first one that I put out from, from the show here. And I'm going to try and get uh, with Fort Scott tomorrow. Today I spent most of, most of my day today was just kind of taking it in. And hopefully tomorrow I can get some interviews in the can and, and get a little bit more polished on it. Oh, snap. Okay, I totally forgot about that. Thanks for bringing that last part up there. We've got people that haven't been to the show before, and we didn't do a very good job of asking them how overwhelming it was or, you know, just getting their impression, because I think that's one aspect of the show that new people can offer that nobody else can. You've been to it once or twice, even just walking into that building, you've experienced it. You're not going to be surprised by anything else again, because you've seen 11 acres of human beings there to participate in the Second Amendment. So I'm going to add that to the list too. So you guys that are new, guys and gals that are new, um, will come back to that one. Uh, but anybody else want to talk about people they've got to meet up with or not? Or we uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I'd like to talk in general. Um, is, uh, uh, generally, uh, since the table was not uh, towards either the concessions uh, nor the in, restrooms. Keep in mind that we're going to talk about the table specifically in a minute. Right. I'm going to talk about engaging with people. I'm just getting there. Okay. Uh, it, it, is people are uh, walking by, by, don't have a destination in mind. They're, they're walking through, walking through. So really opened up people who were walking 
to engage with them and they were much more willing to be engaged about, oh, what is gun channels? And then tell me a little about bit about about it and uh and and and, and some of the other things. And there was was much more of an engaging experience than when I've worked the table in years past because of, of its location, but w- with the general public rather than a specific contact. No, that's super valid because that's really part of the reason we've got the table there, right? It's outreach and just awareness. So awesome. Um, we got roll call out there. He's been here before. I don't know if Grim's still hanging around. Um, who else is out there? Nut, Foose, right? I don't know if there, somebody's got a camera near any of them guys. Sarge, Sarge, they're uh, they're all over talking. You want me to call one of them over? Sarge, no, 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 that's all right. If they don't want to be participating in this chat, then we don't have to waste our time and our valuable audience's time to waste time for them. We'll keep moving. So, Armenthia and Snob's wife, did you guys hang out together? Absolutely. <laughs> Which, this isn't the first time we've met. We met, actually. In November? Uh, in November, yes. Okay. And hung out most of that. And so this well, I'm is glad to say that there's too many gun channels members for me to keep track of. I can't wait until I barely know half of you. It would be awesome. <laughs> but we we've done things together and we've done things separate. Um she's done some things with her husband, um, where she goes and she does his filming and stuff. So she's my best cameraman. If you want to ask her anything, she's kind of right beside me. Well, she's pumping gas, but she will be right beside me again. About two <laughs> seconds. Make her I'm pumping gas. gas. Don't get back in here and then she can answer your face. Yeah. Well, oh she gosh. was driving and I was on this, so she was gonna. She was being nice and doing this. I'm not. I'm not a. What is that word? Feminist or whatever. Where I don't think she's not capable of doing such things as pump her own gas. That's totally. You're woke, dude. That's awesome. Like yeah. you're, not, you're not imposing on her chivalry. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't want her to think she's not capable of pumping her own gas. Hey, my husband totally thinks I'm capable of pumping gas, but he's man enough to get out and pump my gas if we're together in the same vehicle. Well, I would, but I'm on this chat and I'm plugged woke. in, so he ain't woke yet. Mm, okay. All right. So, uh, so stay together then, and uh, attack the show that way. We actually did it both ways. Uh, we've done it together and separate. So, um, right on. Just, so, yeah. was it uh, like a plan you had ahead of time? Because I think you're the only two that really went in as like gun gals, right? Like everybody else had their own thing. Nobody else is teamed up. I mean, I guess Guy has his kid, and well, Cycle's not really, his, his brother's not helping him, right? Grim's brother's not really doing nothing. So, for Grim, I mean, but, uh, you, you two are the only two that are really, like, collaborating on the same project, right? Yes. So is it something you came up with a game plan ahead of time or just winged it? We just, we kind of wing it. We both are kind of like, uh, we went around talking to people today, and um, I was kind of like, um, so are you doing this interview or am I doing this interview? And we just kind of, you know, whichever one is more comfortable with, you know, whatever. And I mean, we just kind of, we, we just kind of share. So, I mean, it's all going to be for the same purpose anyway. So. Right on. So uh, what is this? Obnoxious is looking at Sarge and roll call here. We got Clover. Now Clover changed. Oh no, he's still basically, you need to uh, contact the hotel when this is all over with your fancy camera. Because you might as well be doing a commercial for them. They've, they've got, like, perfect uh, framing there. And whatever this two-bit computer company is over here on the other side. So, uh, anyway, I'm noticing Clover's all day because of his super whatever shirt going on there. And uh, I can see Sarge now and Roll Call shirts. My question is to all y'all who have projects going, how come you have, you missed the opportunity to wear either your own project shirt or some sort of message on the shirt? Don't y'all have your own shirts? Sarge, do you have your own shirt? I wore uh, my C4 Defense shirt. I wore my C4 Defense shirt all day, but I put on a long sleeve because it's cold out. 
Okay, so you were doing that. You were wearing the branding during the show. And roll call had uh, had Cindy wearing his shirt all day. I did. I did notice that. Right on. So Clover, how do you explain yourself, Mister Promoting some video game from the eighties? I'm better than everybody else. I don't need it. <laughs> but I think you know what you think doing videos and stuff. I mean, you got your hat on, I guess. But you know, I got my. Of- I do. Yeah, I got my. So I mean, that counts, right? And, if, uh, and if you like and if you followed my if you followed my Instagram, this wasn't the only Clover Tech cap at uh, at Wanamaker. Uh, there was actually a vendor there wearing a Clover Tech cap, believe it or not, that he had purchased from the swag store. And then uh, I sold one while uh, I was there. Uh, uh, whatever, uh, forty five guy, guy forty five, whatever. Uh, his son had to have one, and of course wanted me to sign it too. So. Technically, there was I had three caps there, so I think I already get a pass on the shirt. Right on. What about uh, uh, if we did a uh, Tulsa Gun Channels type of shirt, or did you know a spread shirt design, and and then made it available for people who want it, and then it can be a you know, like a tour shirt or something. Have maybe do it a design on the front that's collaborative, and then everybody who was at the events names on the back. Oh snap! That would be cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, and then if anybody wants it, grab it. You know, put everybody can put up their own design for that matter. I mean, nobody has to own it. We just kind of all think about it, and then maybe do something like that, like Gun Channels Road Crew or Gun Channels Press or Gun Channels Bikini Team. I don't know. <laughs> maybe I'm not first on a bikini team. Put, put your own channel and all that other stuff. But maybe Gun Channels like Tulsa Meetup or something, or come up with like that, like Gary's picture of the robot dude in the front there. With like uh, Gun Channels Meetup or something, or big ass G behind that robot. You know that's a robot, right? If y'all don't act right. They're gonna activate that robot. He'll go around smashing shit with that big contraption he's got next to him. Is that like? Is that the uh, robot from uh, what? Oh, what was that? That was uh, War of the Worlds. Yeah, that one movie where he comes out of a frisbee. Okay, so let's see. Now we can go back to that table. I think we're caught up with stuff. Uh, but we maybe we can talk about um, people's experiences as a <clears throat> show. So why don't we leave the table? Because I know Dano is going to be up all night, so we can talk about this at any time later. Why don't we talk, <laughs> about, the, why don't we talk about the you guys that are at your first show, and what was it like walking into 11 acres of 4,500 tables Knowing that you got a press pass and a support crew, and you have basically access to that whole show, and your channel is about to go nuts. You're about to explode your channels in a good way. What was it like? Who wants to go first? Uh, I'll go. It was. It was walking in. There was uh, sobering. <laughs> it, it's. It's. Every bit is big as you think it is and then it's bigger did you get scolded scolded for photoing for photoing no i didn't get scolded for photoing star says he got scolded for photoing i actually had uh three or four people ask me about my camera rig yeah and uh because i because i kind of built it myself off of parts from amazon and i made it kind of modular so I could make it as as big as I wanted or as small as I want if I really wanted to go small with it and I had I had uh, at least two people take photos of the name brand on the one part of it so that they could so that they could look it up and track it down so that was kind of cool dude that sounds like you need sooner than later in fact i would encourage you all to be making videos in your hotel rooms you paid money for those hotel rooms do videos in the hotel rooms use the backdrops use the bathrooms use the coffee pots or something but take advantage of the you know the unique backdrops you know and anyway it documents your own stuff 10 years from now if you're still doing this trust me you'll be thankful that you have documented something about your experience in tulsa but anyway uh do videos on your gear because if you say you bought everything on Amazon, guess what? Anybody who has that much interest in what you put together is going to click on those links and buy stuff on Amazon. Fund your projects, build that into the mini, the, into it from the beginning. So uh, document your journeys here. If you rented cars, 
document that and your experiences. The restaurants, it's all valid stuff to document. People are interested in that. All, we're all human beings that eat three times a day. Anybody that suggests otherwise isn't paying attention to the internet. And the gear is uh, definitely a way to do some funding. So I'm curious uh, how you guys do it. And I'm, again, if you do this for any length of time, I suspect you will be, you'll, you'll, you'll find it interesting to go back and look at your old camera gear. I can almost barely remember my old camera gear, but I do have videos on most of it. So if I really wanted to, I could go back and check something out. But all that time it was cooking, you know, the reason, the way I was making all that money on YouTube is because I had videos of the suitcases and videos of the watches we were carrying and videos of the hotel rooms. And I would bust out my bag of uh, stuff that I brought, whether it be, I don't do, I never did clothes because who cares about my clothes, right? But my uh, first aid stuff, my guns, if I brought them, uh, my my camera gear and stuff like that, my computer gear. So uh, that kind of stuff is is interesting to people and, and potentially lucrative. Okay, so I interrupted you there. Um, we were talking about uh, being at the show for the first time. Do you have more, or do you want to throw somebody else? Um, the 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 big thing for me was just going in there and seeing just how big it was. I mean, I like I said, I'd heard from everybody and how big it was, and you get there and you're still not prepared for how big it was. So I can I can just imagine like Sarge went to Shot Show first before he did this, and how absolutely massive that must have been as his first thing. And uh, yeah, I spent I spent today kind of on on just wandering around and looking at everything and kind of just checking out seeing if there was anything for me and then I got a couple of I got a couple of things in there you know as far as quote unquote work if you want to call it that and but tomorrow yeah I'm, I'm probably going to spend tomorrow doing the uh, trying to get some more interviews in the can and doing more of that and I'll, I'll still look around and see if there's anything that catches my eye personally but I think tomorrow's going to be more of a of a work day. I have a question for Obnoxious, being this his first show and whoever else. Was your feet prepared and your shoes prepared for it? Good one. Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, I don't know if my feet will ever be prepared for it, but uh, yeah, I gotta, I gotta. No, Sarge says his knees weren't prepared. I've, Did any? I've, Definitely anybody, gotta get some Advil tomorrow. Did anybody wear one of them thingies, or does your phone tell you? Did you keep track of how many miles steps you walk? Um, I got one on my watch, but it's kind of since it's on your end of your arm instead of like your hip or that, it doesn't keep total accurate count. Uh, let's see, mine's saying eleven thousand five hundred and ten so far today. Does that tell you how many miles? I had six miles. Steps. I had six miles also. Maybe that's a, something that we can do as sort of a friendly competition, and then we can all tell Angry to suck it because we all together walked more miles than he did today. 6.57 miles. I'm winning. I know I've walked the thing to see how many it is, and I want to say it's either 11 or 14. I don't remember. When you walk every single aisle with the side aisles. Or whatever you call those side wings. Anybody else that's their first show want to relate their experience? I'm fixing like? a drop. I'm fixing a drop, but I'll be back in as soon as I get home. Just right on. Anybody else uh, that uh, near somebody who's near new? Yeah, it was uh, my first show. I actually, uh, got into Tulsa Thursday. Got settled into the hotel, went out to find some place to eat and fared weed. Since we've never been here before, go and just look at the outside of the convention center, or the expo center, and it's a little lost truck just about the outside of just how big it was. And then today, going through the uh, exhibitor's entrance and that, and going inside, it's like I was not quite prepared for this, but I don't know, it was just kind of. Kind of a lot to process. And then kind of trying to, uh, you know, find either interesting thing, things to either take pictures of or people to talk to. So, you know. 
Yeah, well, it's a lot to do. I guess one of the things we may have failed on because we did a lot of organizational, well, we didn't do enough organiz. I don't know. I'll ask that question. You guys are the ones that are there. If we did enough pre-organizational work or not, but maybe a little bit more uh, effort to the pre intro or whatever the word would be to uh, give people who are going for their first time, you know, some of the suggestions that we all talked about when it was everybody else's first time, you know, about business cards and wearing comfortable shoes and maybe bring in, since we have a table, bring in something to eat so you don't get uh, screwed on the concession prices or something like that. Uh, picking up catalogs, right? There's those catalogs that I'm hoping somebody will grab me a catalog or two, um, you know, that give the map and the vendor list, basically. There's a really cool catalog up at the, whatever you want to call it, like the sign-in, like the, 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 the promoters area of the show on the south side of the building. They've got a, a magazine which is devoted to gun show promoters. And if anybody wants to grab one of them, I'd appreciate it. Um, it's a eight and a half by 11 magazine called like the big show or something. And it's basically like this big magazine that's, that has all the gun shows in it. And it's sort of a promoter's angle. Maybe it's for the big vendors that go to a lot of shows or something. But anyway, there's some really neat magazines up there. Sometimes uh, publishers will have magazines for free. So anyway, maybe do something in the future for the people that are there for the first time. And then heck, somebody could be there for four times and not know about something, you know, it might be worth talking about different tips and tricks that we like from the show, or that we use at the show. Anybody else new, or are you done? Me? Well, I will say for anybody new that, yeah, I, I didn't have any business cards, and I regret that I don't have them. Oh, you mean for, like, your channel, or for, like, to drop and say, yeah. here's who I am? Oh, okay, yeah, that would, yeah. yeah. I, re I regret that I don't have them. But I'm also thankful that I went with somebody because, like I said, I, I hung with Sarge. He did a couple interviews, and that gave me, you know, kind of a, a mentor to uh, well, I go in. That, Sorry. That's, that's fine. But it was, it was, it was awesome because I used it when I went to do the uh, cold fire or cool fire training. I used that exact system to, to get his. So I had, if somebody's going for their first time, if, if, uh, one of us that have been to one has it, and you know that person's there for the first time. Maybe grab them and and take them and give them a little bit of mentorship and show them a little bit of the ropes. Now, did those guys that have been there a few times have you guys showed the new guys about the swimming pool on the roof? No. Uh, Sarge tried to get me up to the swimming pool, but. Uh, I figured he was going to go Biden me, so I didn't go up there. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I think Grim that. Grim went up to the went up to the swimming pool but, on the roof. But there is a rumor of this mad kisser going around, just randomly a man kissing other men, and I just like wow, it just blew my mind. Is Dan sleeping? What happened right now? So. I guess that'll take us to uh, the table. Unless anybody else who's new wants to jump in, feel free. We're going to steamroll right over here. If anybody's getting gizzarded, you, uh, you squawk out. Um, but what about the table? It's been alluded to. We mentioned it in the earlier show when we were live at the show that um, the table is in a different location. It's more uh, accessible, but I don't need to tell everybody. You're there. Tell us. Let's go up at the table this time. But not to anybody. Go. Well, I'll go ahead and start off. Uh, I already, you know, I mentioned about the location and how when people are walking by, uh, because it's not very close to either the concessions nor the exits nor the restrooms, they're, they don't necessarily have that destination, one of those three destinations in mind. So they're kind of like taking in, gee, you know, mentally. So they kind of pause at the table, giving you the opportunity sitting there to say, oh, w welcome. This is Gun Channels. And uh, we're an online uh, virtual community of people from all aspects of guns, from people who like to go planking to competitors, to people that like to reload, uh, to people who are into self-defense and all ass hunting and all other aspects of firearms. And we get together online and we have discussions about various topics. And, uh, and the other thing that really worked well uh, was having uh, those little squirt guns. 
uh, and then the uh, four safety rules uh, that was at at attached. And I understand um, I'm, I, several of the people here, I think, are, are, are the ones responsible for that idea. But it was an excellent idea that really worked out well because, you know, while I'm talking to the kids about, oh, you know, do you have a friend and something like that, I'm also talking to the parents at the same time about, you know, about gun channels. And, and then I talked to, to the boy or the girl about, you know, a friend and a sticker and this and that. And, and then again, you know, the, and then switch back over to mom or dad or both. So I found it a very positive experience as compared to when we were down by uh, people were just on, on a beat either towards the bathroom, towards the concessions or towards, you know, the, uh, an exit or something. Yeah, well, like that weird corner, it was like people would kind of look to see if you were selling something and then keep walking without even really moving towards right. you. Right. I interrupted somebody there. Oh, I was just going to say one thing I noticed. It seems like the squirt guns went a lot faster this time. I mean, we still got enough left for tomorrow, but we, you know, we have basically half of them left after the last show. And I think if we kept putting them out there, I think we'll run out this time very easily. Is it worth doing it again? How did we do that last I time? Think y'all just paid for them or something? Yeah, I just ordered them on Amazon. They're really cheap if you buy, like, I bought two deals of 25 for, like, I don't remember. It was less than $20 for 50 squirt guns. It may have been, like, $15 or something. All right. Well, thanks again for doing that. But, yeah, I think we should, it sounds like we should do it again, right? Just as a cool thing. So I thought it was cool to think that a little kid's going to go home with something. I know I used to get pissed when I would go to a gun show, especially when somebody else would go home with something, and I'd have to go home with nothing because super cheap and i wasn't going to spend my allowance on crap right but i'd love to have uh some free it would have been awesome and another thing is pink sent a whole bunch of bracelets that say hashtag gun show loophole tour and he sent a bunch of kid sizes so we have those on there too they're camo i think angelina made them so that was pretty cool so we had them on the table too now you guys set out your cards like your cards for your channels and then i saw somebody was putting out uh, or some of y'all were putting out stickers and stuff. How did you come up with that? Did you just bring a certain amount and decide that was, you know, like this part's dedicated to outreach or like extras? Or how did you guys come up with all that? Or was that, was that thought out? I mean, the table looked good. Was that something that somebody put some effort into? Or is it just a happenstance or what happened? Yeah, it was, that was put out beforehand that if you had any, swag you wanted to bring to dump on the table we'll bring it you know and all that stuff was picked up too so um i know for me i just you know i just went through and you know dedicated us a certain amount i was like well i've got 20 of these let me take five you know and i've got 50 of these left well i'll take 20 of these or whatever uh that way because i wanted to make sure i still had you know stuff for the swag store for giveaways and all of that good kind of stuff, but you know, wanted to put things on the table to draw attention, and it's and it's really cool to have things on the table that you know, it's it's bait. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, we're not we're not selling anything, so we don't got you know, it's a, it's a gun show, but we don't have guns or knives or something. You know, we got to have something that catches the eye and it's kind of interesting, and so with a lot of the patch designs and sticker designs and the uh the water pistols and all the other stuff on there that draws attention to the table especially in a in a higher traffic area which we were in it draws attention to the table and then when you go hey it's everything on the table is free right <laughs> then i mean it's even it's it's even better it, it draws it even better once that they really start looking at the table and then asking questions about you know what what this is and, and i think we got onto into it a little bit off air earlier about <clears throat> trying to trying to explain what it is you know honestly um because the the initial because the tablecloth says you know gunchannels.com and uh, all of that the assumption is that you know basically we all work for this place called gun channels and so it's trying to let everybody know that no, it's a bunch of individual efforts and a bunch of individual channels and projects and that sort of stuff. And so we kind of come together under that umbrella to, to cover the show, to get, um, you know, get the show out to other people. 
And one thing I think we could maybe do next year if we have the same table in the same area again is put up Armenthia's frame she used in the uh, hotel lobby and just get a plain tablecloth even and put the gun channels thing up like she had in the hotel lobby behind us. I think that would be pretty cool. Well, I, we can get more tablecloths, but yeah, exactly. Having it, having something behind and on the table would definitely give it a, a way more professional look. And uh, yeah, dig it. Um, I don't know if um, what the hell was I going to say that? Uh, I don't know. Um, I don't want to get into it tonight because I'd rather talk about this show than talk about gun channels and what we're doing at this show because that's just too meta, right? We're we don't need to look at what we're doing 100% while you guys are there. We can always look at it after. Plus, you're going to acquire more data tomorrow after talking to people and stuff. So just realizing that eventually we're going to talk about the table and specifically the interaction with the people. I would only ask maybe to, to close this section of it, unless there's something else somebody wants to throw in, of course. But uh, to maybe keep in mind, like, what kind of questions came in. I mean, I'm assuming it wasn't the same question from everybody. And I'm assuming it wasn't a completely different question from everybody. So there's got to be, like, a few kinds or groups or types of questions. And maybe we can come up with some ways that maybe our signage or a handout or something could address some of the basic questions. Like, you know, maybe I hate to do it because I don't I hate Facebook. But if, you know, if we said something like Facebook for guns, everybody would know in a minute what that meant. Right. But, you know, it's not necessarily what we're trying to be. So maybe if we said like gun channels is community or something like that, you know, there's something we could come up with or like uh, Clover actually had something awesome today. I'm going to steal it and act like Clover never said it, but like gun channels build bridges in the gun community or something like that. And then people come up and actually ask a, a pertinent question about gun channels instead of like something as broad as what's this about? They could say, what does that mean? You know, and now we have an opportunity to just get right into the nuts and bolts. But anyway, again, I don't necessarily, unless you guys want to, I don't really want to necessarily get way too much into the table other than the table itself. So we had one table in past years, we've had a table next to old guys or like buyers who left. So we basically had a table and then we had like two or three tables. This time we have a table with people that are probably going to be there most of the day tomorrow still, right? And they were all there, there all day today. What was it like having just a table? For anybody. I'm not real sure it wasn't a little bit better for traffic, to be honest with you. And the reason I say that is because you, you had people standing there. You know what I mean? And so you had people kind of standing beside the table or in front of the table, talking to people sitting behind the table. And so that, you know, I, I've seen that dynamic entice people over and over and over again with SHOT Show or NRA or whatever that you're, I've seen it happen with interviewing people where, you know, it's the loneliest dude you've ever seen at a booth and <laughs> you stop and you go, Hey man, you want to you know, shoot an interview? You want to talk about some stuff? Um, yeah, sure. Cause he's, you know, he's as bored as a bump on a pickle. And as soon as you kick that camera on, you know, and start doing something and you're showing, you know, there's some, some something going on at that booth, there's some attention, then it starts drawing people, right? They w want to know what's going on. Well, what's going on over here? What's so special about this? And I think that it works the same way. They don't necessarily know that, you know, the two people standing in front of the table talking to the two people behind the table, you know, we're all there together. They don't know that. Um, and so they kind of, come over and sneak a closer peek to just kind of see what's going on, right? Well, my grandpa always tells that, uh, you know, back in the 70s, people who owned restaurants and bars would buy old broke-down cars and have them put in the parking lot of it so that it looked like there was people there to get people enticed to stopping. So it's kind of that same principle, I think. And it does work because, you know, if something's crowded, you want to get in there and see what it is, see what they're looking at. It wasn't the greatest not having power, but it really didn't bother me any because oh, okay. especially where we didn't have another table, it wasn't that big of a deal because there was really nowhere to set up a laptop or anything anyways. I mean, it would have just been in the way on our one table. There's no way we could have set up a laptop really. Ah, okay. So you know, the power I, wasn't that important. I never even thought about it. Maybe we brought it up before, but because um, I wasn't a big fan of bringing a laptop just because it seems like such an expensive thing to get trashed, right? 
but uh, those little projectors, like I got little projectors that are about size of a pack of cigarettes, and they got to have better ones by now. I have like a $69 one from years ago. They must have nicer ones by now that can project and maybe have, since we usually get a wall, right, project something up onto the wall that way, maybe way up in the air. That'd be kind of neat to put it on a big stick and have it project like up above Arminthia's, uh tablecloth thing and, you know, have something going up there. This is darker up there, too. Yeah, you know, we've talked about uh, the idea of, you know, well, the projector idea, the idea of maybe a monitor on the table or, you know, something like that. And I will say this, there was, there's been a, there was a couple of booths today or tables today, whatever you want to call them, that I walked by and I looked at that had monitors up and were playing some type of a video or something. And they seem to be getting a draw on that. They seem to be getting people stopping and looking. So it kind of it kind of makes me wonder, um, you know. And I've got extra phones, and I've got power banks, and you can, you know, nowadays with technology, you don't even have to have a laptop or anything. You could, you could tie in and and uh, you know, with like a, a little smart TV. You wouldn't have to have anything big. Um, you know, you could tie in with a with an old phone or something, and just run a playlist or something of you know Gun Channel's videos or whatever. Um, you know. And that might draw that might draw some attention too, and and sort of give people a visual of what's going on. What might be cool is that if uh, everybody put together like a little thirty second clip or something, and we splice it all together as you know we are gun channels. And I'm yeah, and just had like if you just had like a thirty-two inch TV on a stand behind us, just playing that over and over. Say it's five minutes long total. Um, then... I would. I'm gonna just throw this out there because just uh, I don't know. Since we're kind of talking about this aspect of it, <clears throat> number one, I could care less about gun channels getting large. We've talked about that in the past, and there's all kinds of issues to that. Gun channels. I I like the community to stay strong and grow, but grow naturally, organically. I don't necessarily. I'm, I, the, the table was an attempt to give creators a place to put their batteries and to take a breather. And then the auxiliary um, purpose of the table was to put something on it. But honestly, um, outreach and trying to get people to join gun channels, um, I don't put ads out there and I don't solicit um, membership. I do say, come join the conversation. In other words, if you'll notice, whenever I do any kind of marketing or whatever you want to call it, like advertising for gun channels, it's be part of the conversation. Come join the conversation. If you're a creator, create, creator of, con of firearms content, come be part of the, you know, collaborate and, 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 uh, and share. So uh, give people, in other words, an offer to come work and come participate. Uh, if I'm, I'm certainly not trying to build a Facebook and create a huge membership of people that want to sit in bleachers and be entertained, they expect a lot of fancy garbage that we're just not going to even try to offer. But if we're talking like somebody comes up and says, hey, I've got a phone in my pocket and I want to do what you guys do, then yeah, let's get that person up and running and give them whatever help we can. So what I'm thinking is, what if y'all put together 30 second videos of your projects and your channels and then at the end say we're on gun channels because really gun channels is like a facebook in only in the respect that you don't join facebook and say i'm facebook number 257 you say i'm so and so on facebook i'm me on facebook so you guys are you your channels are your channels and then you're on gun channels. So I'd be super happy if you guys wanted to do 30 second video plugs of your projects and say, this is what how awesome I am. And I look at the of the Second Amendment this way, and I involve people this way, or like Ghost or like Clover, or like everybody's different, right? That's what gun channels is. So I'm not at all interested in trying to tell people what gun channels is. I'm certainly interested in helping y'all do your thing. And if people want to come along who are interested in what you're doing meet up at your table if you're going to do an interview or something let's use the table as a shared resource but as far as outreach and shit, i liked this i think what i liked the best about this time around is it was all your stickers and your business cards and it showed the diversity of gun channels and that's 
I just want to throw that out there that I am certainly not interested in making some sort of a, a gun channels like handshake and you know whatever. So basically, yeah. what you're thinking is like everybody take their channel trailer kind of deal and splice it together mm -hmm. one. Video or maybe on we do something that says. Why are we here? To help the gun community. Are you interested in finding the Second Amendment organization in your area? Are you aware of what the uh, things are that are attacking our liberty today at the state, regional, and federal level? Uh, are you a manufacturer and you struggle to get the word out? Would you like to get with people who are fluent in social media and cameras and software? Like maybe we give them that kind of drive. Like, hey, what are we doing here? Like, we're just like the press, except we give a shit about the Second Amendment and you. Like, we're kind of like NBC, except we give a shit about you. And and let people know, like, hey, we're here charging our cameras. If you want to bullshit, bullshit. If you want to uh, uh, promote your product or something, let's make an appointment. But maybe we make Gun Channel's table more like uh, like the the table for, like, the, the medics or something where it's they're not selling nothing. They're not doing outreach. They're just the medics doing their thing. If you want to come hang out with them, great. If you want to talk about first aid kits, I'll bet you they'll talk about first aid kits all show long until somebody needs them, and then they're going to leave you and go do whatever they need to do, right? Just throwing some stuff out there. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's, my, that's my thought with the... Uh with doing any type of presentation or something like that, because that's exactly how I broke it down and explained it today, is that, you know, we were a bunch of individuals that, you know, make the choice to come together under that banner, you know, because of the, the value that it offers as a place to collaborate in a way, right? All of our efforts can coalesce in one place. But, you know, I think that, and we, and we talked about that off air and I, you know, it's certainly it's, it's late no one to get into it tonight, but you know, that, that I will mention it enough to say that, you know, that type of an approach also plays into the, to the power and the strength that we have as a community, uh, as a community of individuals, you know, we're not, uh, you know, we're not robots under, uh, you know, a demanding overlord. You know, we we don't, you know, we don't go and come together and do things as gun channels because we're forced or we're programmed to do so, right? Got bad news for you, Clover. You're going to lose oh. the election to Kennedy. We can see you sweating. Oh, <laughs> it's funny. So, uh, all right, I'm going to do a palate cleanser here. I don't know how late it is there. It's midnight there, so y'all probably want to get going. We don't need to draw it out, but I can certainly keep going. It's only 10 o'clock for me, so it's all up to you. But I'm going to ask Obnoxious, the best thing you saw at the show today. Uh, the best thing I saw at the show today was all the folks that I came down here and to meet. That was that was, that was the best That was the best thing to me, was, was right meet, meeting all the people that I've, that I've been talking to online for the last year and a half or so. Snob's wife, is she still in here with Snob? She can be. Give me two seconds. I'm walking okay. to her. And then we're asking her, what's her favorite thing at the show today? Two seconds. How long are two seconds in Oklahoma? What's going on here? I know I'm going to use my fancy daylight savings. <laughs> he's on, he's on Tulsa time. Don't say that because he'll come back singing. <laughs> All right, so roll call. Best thing you seen in the show today. Roll call. Best uh, thing. I saw uh, a bunch of SKSs that I couldn't buy. That was the best thing I saw today. A Doing bunch good. of SKSs that Too when expensive. old people come up to my gun counter, they say, you know, I used to get those things out of crates for... $75 a piece. And then I look at them today and I'm like, uh, but, too expensive tonight or this, this weekend. What was that again? You're saying didn't get them. They're too expensive. Yeah, man. They were, they were out of this world price, and it, but it, they were still cool to look at. And what was really cool is last year, like people were kind of sketchy when you walk up to them and you ask them, 
you know, can I can I take at least take pictures of some of the guns? They were like, no, no, no. This year, I have, I think I've almost filled my camera with uh, tons of pictures. So people were really open. I think that's the best thing about the show. People were really open. They and I told them about GunChannels.com, uh, what I was doing, why I had this press pass, and they were really open to let me take pictures of the firearms that they had there. So that was really cool, and I'm really appreciative to uh, uh, the the folks that set up their booths and and let me do that. I had a couple I had a, I had a couple humbugs in there once in a while, but it wasn't anything like last year. So that was really cool. Awesome. Other than the SKS is being seven hundred dollars. Oh, that's a lot of money. I suspect though, at that kind of price, they're got to be special or unique or something, unless the guy just really liked them. But uh, I want to say thanks to y'all because I think I think we're not overstepping our bounds to say that you all and your efforts helped do what we're trying to accomplish here. Bring the uh, the, the gun show up to the internet. It's got to have some response. People have to see that, and I suspect that's one of the reasons that you know we're changing the culture of the show in a way by giving them some positive reach, right? And I mean, we never know how somebody's somebody is going to say, "Hey, isn't this the show that you went to? Isn't this Grandpa's show, or isn't this so and so Uncle somebody's show, or Aunt somebody goes to this show?" And it gets back to them, even if they're not online, right? So, some of these people that might never even touch a computer might have heard, you know, in the months and years that we've been doing this now, that oh yeah, like there's some people walking around the show. Like that's one of the extra benefits of being at the show is that they they bring press in to give positive coverage. So let's not overlook our voices in this whole thing. Well, that's a good one. So did we get Snob's wife? Finally? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. So what's the best thing you've seen at the show? Uh, well, the first thing is Armentia. Um, so I was really happy to see her. But meeting Aww. everybody, on, <laughs> meeting everybody on the on the crew and stuff that came down that I didn't get to meet in November, um, and walking around the show. I mean, it's you know, some of the things you've seen last year, you know, and stuff, and there'll be a lot of things that you didn't see. So, you know, talking to people we talked to last year and meeting new people. So, you know, right just on, a little no, bit of everything. Have you been going to the show with Snob all these years before Gun Channels? Yeah. Um, so and were you hanging out and enjoying the show the same way, or did this add something, hopefully, to the show for you? No, it's definitely added. I mean, before when I've gone with him, um, before going as media, I mean, we've maybe spent a few hours there, but I was pretty much just tagging along. I wasn't really interested in it. Cranky. Yeah, he's over here saying I was cranky. I was really cranky because I wasn't, you know, I wasn't against guns, but I didn't really go out there and shoot. I wasn't into guns. Um, you know, he just pretty much dragged me along and you know, I just walked along and, you know, was tired and cranky and my feet hurt. <laughs> you right know, I, I can't there's 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 certainly nothing that appealed to women up until maybe the last, I don't know, 10 years, maybe. And it's sort of changed. You can tell me because you've been, I'm sure, experiencing it as much, you know, that the, there's a change to the shows. And I'm not going to suggest that it's you know, like female friendly or anything yet but it's got to be better than it was you know to some extent because there's so many more females in the industry and in the community right but uh i think we still got a lot to do with gun shows to make them just for everybody make them you know take the the, the potential of gun shows right they're, they're pretty much still the old 1950s gun shows still happen and they just we're slightly changing them a little bit along the way yeah because i remember when i get, went before i mean i i might see you know one or two booths that were kind of more female related but there wasn't a whole bunch so it was mostly you know him going to look at guns but now you know you go and you see you know tons of different stuff other than just guns um and stuff but yeah so there's a lot more of that appeal to, to women now compared to what it was a couple of years a few years ago Cool. And I've said it before, but I want to say it again that I appreciate the females from gun channels that show up and bring female influence to gun channels, but also coverage to the show. Because if it was just us guys walking around with cameras, 
obviously we'd be missing stuff or if when we do try to cover stuff we're just not you know we're not in we don't have the insight uh so i'm i'm again i want to give you credit because value your voices there's not very many females doing this in the industry at all even fewer at this show so as much value as we're adding you guys are at you gals are adding even more to the females that are there trying to again change the the culture of these shows the community itself to uh to include as much you know stuff for everybody in here so right on that's what it's all about right definitely and you know, I, I, I've had a blast the last few times I've gone with, you know, me actually talking to the people because I didn't talk to the people before. Um, and I've had awesome conversations and the people I meet from, you know, the Gun Channel crew are awesome. Um, so I really enjoy them and, you know, especially, you know, being a part of the Gun Gals now and, and having Armenthia and Jesse, it's just made it so much better and so much more enjoyable. Let me sleep on it. Daniel, what's the store number? Daniel, what's the store number? Are you accusing me of being asleep? Yeah. Okay. So, Daniel, what was the best thing at the show today? Uh, the best thing at the show today uh, was talking with um, the, the kids. Right on. Uh, they're they're up to the table and looking at squirt guns and whatnot? Yep. It, it just, and, and, and just the, it just, I just love talking to kids. Right on. So, is Grim out there still? Yeah, Grim's still here. Grim, Talk what's to... your favorite thing to show today? What's your favorite thing you saw at the show today, Grim? I'm I'm on mute. So. Oh, you're on mute. Yeah. yeah, we got you. Uh, the best thing was the uh, the couple I was talking to that make uh, use repurposed books and make those hidden books, but he actually leaves the outside pages loose. Like you turn it around, you move it around, and it looks like an actual book. And he had everything from books that were a year old to older books that could mix in, or he would do anything. You know, if you brought something, he could work on it. Yeah, I, I walked up really when Grim cool was talking. Price wise, is there a budget? I walked up when Grim was talking to them. They were really neat. Yeah. But that and couple, like, and they had a good story. They had a good story also. He he was beginning to retire, and he was just fiddling with stuff, and he wanted to create one for himself, <laughs> and now he's been doing it, he said, going on five or six years. And it, I think it's, I know you're talking about it. I think it's cool, too, that, like you say, they've got, like, actual books that can blend into someone's actual library instead of, like, here's all these books on, like, naval history and then some book on sewing or whatever that, like, you know, some store might have. You know, he actually, like you say, he can give you a dust jacket, or you can give him a dust jacket or something, so you give him the right size book, or you just give him a book or give him the right... Yeah. yeah. From, I mean, or give him a used book. He he said they'd go to, you know, library sales, Goodwill, and I mean, they had Tom Clancy, Patterson, you know, even had a couple on Hillary and Obama just as a kind of a fun joke. And, you know, and they were hollowed out and everything from a small to medium... Or just an open shape if you wanted to put jewelry or other things now. And I think Stacy's going to try to do a video with him tomorrow. Okay, good. Let's see. How about Ape? What was the best thing to show today? Uh, damn, that's kind of a hard one for me. It's just kind of all such a uh, kind of a new experience for me. Um, we're going at the show. Uh, I'm going to have to say the highlight of my day was uh, talking with uh, uh, Rob Leahy from uh, Simply Rugged. I mean, it's, uh, I don't know, I haven't really done this, and it's, you know, he was real, uh, real kind of cool with uh, talking to me about some of his products and that. Um, as far as, like, just stuff at the show, I mean, man, I was just kind of overwhelmed at all the different just AR components. I mean, if there's, I would think that if there ever was an argument to be uh, made that the AR is a common or in common use, I mean, just look at the amount of just uppers or barrels and other little parts that are in just like one section of that show. And then there's like four or five other sections like that all the way around. 
So, yeah. Right on. Who do we have off camera? Is Nut still around, or are you leaving? Uh, I don't think he's around unless he's in in a truck with somebody. I think everybody that's not on camera is covered. It just just Grim is left, or okay. just Grim was the only was the only one. Okay, that's not on a thing. So did Wright uh, and Nut? Those guys left with Foos? Yeah. I Think so. Probably should have talked about their guns earlier. I think uh, Cycle and Wright were they the only ones that bought guns? Do you guys know? Uh, I think so. I know. Did Rokal buy a gun? Uh, yeah, Rokal. Rokal Ro Ro bought one. A, yeah. You bought a gun, didn't you? And Foos and trees. Wright. Yeah, Thanks. I bought. Uh, my son, my son's an. Uh, I would call him an avid shooter. He shoots all the time. Every time. I shoot, he shoots, and uh, he wanted his own twenty-two. He wanted his own twenty-two, something to call his, where he maintains it, does his thing. He's got good grades in school, so I I bought him one today. Uh, it was a Marlin sixty. Uh, it's a good gun. Uh, the guy told me all about it. I looked down in there, and made sure it was all clear, and. Uh, that's what I bought today, and I'm I'm grateful for it. I sent him a picture today, and uh, all I got was hearts, uh, like when you do little heart emoji things. And he's gonna be ecstatic when I come back there, and we're gonna go shoot it, maybe make a video. And uh, he's got to maintain it, and it's gonna go in the safe. And every time he comes over for the weekend, we're gonna go shoot that thing. And uh, this is my first purchase at the Wanamaker Gun Show, which made it even better. Because it wasn't a purchase that I wanted to do. It was a purchase for somebody else. You know, and now he can take this when he grows up. He can pass this off to his son and say, it came from the Tulsa Wanamaker Gun Show. When your grandfather uh, went down there and actually was able to purchase a firearm out of state. So hopefully it'll be like back when there was all kinds of laws and you couldn't just buy guns out of state like you can now. Right, right. I mean, I, it was like last year. Last year, I almost tried to buy like four pistols, a couple rifles, and I could have took the long guns home, but I couldn't take the pistols home. So it was, and I flew last year. So I, and I had the going to Chicago, and we all know about that place. So I didn't want the hassle, but now that I've dr I've driven this drive, and I can do it, and it's fine, even though Cindy falls asleep halfway through it <laughs> it's it's all good it was just the fog was really bad the fog was really bad yeah. coming down here and i'm like looking at the side of the road and i, I had to like kind of nudge her and tell her to wake up make sure she didn't see taillights and then but yeah and i might take them down here and give them a good experience i think it's time for the next generation to see what we do and what we experience and understand laws, because we're all law-abiding citizens, and uh, have a great time and uh, give them something that they can pass on for the future. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, a uh, guy brought his kid, Night Prowler brought uh, his kid. Uh, trying to think, is that the only kid we've had at the show? I want to say somebody else brought a kid one time. I don't know, but I might be thinking of Enrique in Phoenix. So, um, but it sounds like we've got uh, Miss Roll Call sitting right there who doesn't get much airtime. What was your favorite thing at the show? Cindy sitting right there, or did you just talk? Hold about on, it? he's got to run over to her. It's going to take two Tulsa seconds. So, I guess, uh, where to go, Dano? Clover, what was the best thing at the show? He's going to say he's sitting in the parking you know, lot. Well, I don't, you know, I don't know. It's, it's, it's tough to say for me. Because, um, I mean, there was, for me, there was some disappointment. Um, but I will say that I was able to, I guess the best thing for me was I was able to have more conversations with regular people at the show. 
than I've ever done before. Um, it's it's difficult to get into the mode, especially after, like I said, after you have the experience of SHOT Show and NRA and all this other industry stuff. Um, it's easy to get locked into that mode and just not really be paying attention to the to the rank and file to the regular people, the mom and pop and stuff like that out there, that element. Um, but that being said, um, one of the things that allowed me to do that, because I really went into this, um, I knew that I knew that we were going to have a lot of people, and I knew that you know we were probably going to utilize every pass we had, and you know I knew that there was quite a few that had never been before, so you know I was I was worried were they going to be overwhelmed? I was worried were they going to be contributing in a way, especially with Ghost being down, were they going to contribute in a way because I was worried that, you know, and, and as I do every time this comes up, I worry that, okay, are we, are we getting out enough content out there that they're, they're going to be appeased, that they're going to be happy with that? Because we talk, always talk so much about going to the le next level. What more can we do? What more can we do? Right. And so that puts this doubt and this worry in my mind that if we're talking about what more can we do, then obviously there's a benchmark. There's a certain amount that seemingly we have to hit. And I'm thinking, okay, we've got a, a lot of folks that it's their first time. We've got a lot of folks that it, you know, it's only their second time. And I got to say, what allowed me to, to ease my mind, uh, and, I'm, and I'm proud of, of all the guys for that, is i mean they busted their rears today they really did um you know uh the who was it uh guy 45 man he hit the ground running obnoxious was knocking it out of the park you know sarge we know what he can do um yeah i mean it was just that, that took that took a that eased my mind right uh and then allowed me to once that eased my mind not having to worry about are we meeting that quota if you want to call it that or we're going to be able to hit that mark then I, I didn't have to it took the pressure off of me to just kind of enjoy the show and talk to people there and kind of take in things and i've never really been able to do that or i've never i won't say i've never been able to do that i've never done that and so uh you know i'm thankful for for all the uh all the media help that we had there all the teammates that we had and the job that they did very cool and i was gonna say i don't know if um if developing and 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 innovating is always growth right because certain amount it can be uh pivot versus growth right like a different direction versus just more of the same so i think i know what you're saying like if we've got a if we want to do more then that assumes that we're going to do as much as we did last time and then more right but i don't know if we always have to do more because we we have no idea how many people are going to be involved and how conducive i guess the show would be to it or and then who knows what kind of political stuff like next year we've got a lot of experience now maybe we do something different next year maybe we set up a table that's a hundred percent advocacy i think we toyed around with the idea of each bringing like a local or federal level um like pamphlets or sign up forms and then just be advocates for all the groups and like hey did you know that there's this many groups fighting for our rights did you know that there's this many things i mean there's less ways we could play it i guess um roll call any back yeah man she's right here so know, what, let know. me hand the phone over and see me are they no you're, like, you're, she, she, she now just wondering what's up. the what's your favorite thing at the show this today um Finding my drinking cup with the paracord handles. So what, I get two... a braided paracord type of thing? Make it a mug? Yeah. Well, it was just the handle, and then it comes with a mug with two metal straws. I only paid, what, 55 for the... No, gee whiz, what she's not telling you is she was getting deal after deal. Every table she went up to, she got a deal. Yeah, I, I, I kind of did. Playing the girl card? They would card. tell him full price, and I wouldn't have to pay full price. Yeah, playing the girl card? No, I was not playing the girl card. We know how it is. It's not like my shoulders are back and the girls are out. The girls were completely covered. It's not like they were showing. 
I just stumped them all. <laughs> I just no, stumped them all. They, they have nothing else to say. Dead. 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 Killed it. That's a game changer. So what, who did we Giz, Gary, did you go? Did we Gizzard, Gizzard? Uh, yeah, I think I was there. No, I'm saying, did you go with uh, what was your favorite thing of the show? I haven't yet, no. And uh, at first I was going to go the route that Clover just did, but since he's already covered that, and I reiterate everything he said, but I think my favorite part was that uh, Snob, the gun Snob had given me a, uh, a microphone rig for my phone so I could point the uh, directional mic in front of the uh, camera and actually pick up the people I was recording better. And it worked like a charm, and I was able to get way better audio quality on my videos. And I felt a little bit more professional having a full rig like that, and it just made everything so much easier to do. And uh, I'm quite pleased with the way everything came out. So uh, that and uh, being my third show, I feel like I have my legs under me now pretty well as far as knowing what to do and everything. So uh, to me, uh, everything went pretty well today, all the way around. Right on. Did we miss anybody? Sarge? Did we do Sarge? And then, no, I don't think we did. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Sarge here, about I'll, dirt or something? Hold on. I'll give you. A, I'll give him over to you. What we got? What are we doing? Uh, Matt, if you want to link us, you never enough ammos out there. We got a slot. If you want to link, I'll send it to you on gun channels. So, Sarge, what was your favorite thing at the show today? We saw downstairs. I saw a guy, and we were just talking about it. He had four tables of AMT auto mags with boxes. He must have almost all of them in existence. All the different with, calibers? Or you're talking like 44 Magnum auto mags? He had all or different all, calibers. I guess they're 44 auto mags for the real ones, right? That's the actual. What? And the different uh, manufacturers. Yeah. What they came after auto mags. Yeah. Before. And like, like Fine Ape was saying, he pointed, it, pointed out some of the finer points that he also had them from different manufacturers as they changed hands during the years he had they have got all the auto mags okay i bet so they had all, 50 all the am tooling as it went from like the two or three places in california then i think texas for like three or four different companies yes he had four tables of them and wow. some display cases but all the ones on the tables included the cardboard boxes i mean that no, was, was that, just shocking i thought were that was you my able favorite to thing were you able to get any video with that or of that or pictures? I think I did take some video of it and I talked to the guy, but I think I might go back and kind of really pick his brain because I don't know where you find all that. I don't know how you acquire that much. And it's not as if it's a, they may have bought a collection, but this was all stuff for sale. It was at a used gun store that had, they had one of the, you know, when they set up all the tables and then they have their area in behind them where they walk in amongst all of them. So they were like five or six tables long. They basically had their own row. Like and they had one row that was all their long guns and they had a lot of long guns. And then they had a second row, you know, where they get both sides of it. That was all pistols. And one whole side of that row was AMTs. And it was, I want to go back and pick their brain and see how they acquired all those. Yeah, just, I would, and I trying would. to sell them. Yeah. I would suggest highly, like, if you got the time and inclination, or if they've got the time and you've got the inclination, I suspect that could be the kind of video to blow up because people, in my yeah. experience, were really into AMT videos of any kind. And uh, yeah. it really put down some interesting reference. If that guy's never done anything like that before, um, you know, that's the kind of stuff that people will, what do they call it, uh, long tail or evergreen. Like, that's the kind of stuff mm -hmm. that'll cook for you forever. They just, and if I mean, you can there find so like, many of them. If you can find like a book on Amazon that, you know, talks about that, then link that in the description too, because you're going to find people that are researching it, find it, you know, grab that link and maybe buy a book. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a fantastic idea. And that's like, that's the thing that really piqued my interest that I've seen so far. And I may see if, uh, if they do shipping, I may be able to acquire one for myself. If they'll Which ship one? it. Which one would you be eyeballing if you were to partake in one? I'm going to do a little research tonight. Of course, there's not many hours before the show opens up in the morning. 
But I'm I'm interested in to see if the 22 Magnum actually worked. And, and he's got several different ones there, different barrel lengths. Do you I want the bad news if, or the bad news first? Do what? I'm sorry. Do you want the bad news or the bad news? I want the bad news. I have, in my experience, because I've always been a fan myself, I've seen more than one brand, you know, more than one incarnation of the 22 Mags, and I've never seen one work. Oh, well. But they're working there. Uh, they're cool. All the other ones work just fine. It's just 22 Magnum was too much of a pain, I think. I think one of the reasons the Brendel's... None of them have ever really protected. worked well, have they? Any 22 no, no, the other ones. The other ones, I think, get a bad rap. In my opinion, I used to... My job was to shoot the guns at the shop. When Bob would get a new gun in, he knew that I could make video or I would make video, so I would basically go shoot the guns for free, right? So he would mm. let me shoot whatever guns I wanted. And I would always shoot an auto, any kind of AMT or any other derivatives. All the other ones seemed to work fine. And we would get them in all different conditions of like people that kept them pristine, the people that shot them all the time and just put them in a shoebox. And I would shoot them however and then clean them, right? Because what's the point of cleaning them first? So yeah. anyway, I've shot all of them, most a lot of them, and <coughs> they're pretty good, except for the 22 Magnums. And like I say, I think it's just a too long of a cartridge. It was something about the, the you know, the metal didn't give enough flex or something, not enough dwell or too much dwell, something about it. They're just glitchy. And you can't clean it. You can't clean it away. It's just something about that. Oh, uh, I'm still going to go back. I'm a, let's go to look. Yeah. I'm but a, I'm a awesome one that guns. Guns. And well, nobody well. makes them. They exist. They're worth money as investments. I own plenty of guns that don't work great because they're just freaking cool guns. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's going to be my project in the morning. Right on. Let's see. Matt... Never enough ammo is asking. He got an offer to get a Walther P1 for five hundred dollars. He's asking, should he take it? And I don't even know what that gun is, so you all can tell him what to spend money on or not. So Matt, should he buy a Walther P1 for five hundred dollars? Yes or no? Wow, is this even gun channel? Yeah. I'm I muted. I'm no Walther expert. I can't tell you. I don't know anything about that model. Oh, okay. Well, you just bumped us, man. I don't think I just seen Yankee post something on Instagram. He might be around. He might be awake. Um, did I cover everybody asking about what your favorite thing at the show was? No. You give her to me again. Wait, right. what was your favorite thing at the show? Oh, no, wait. Um, you're ask hold on we were supposed to ask uh sarge about some kind of shirt or something right some, I don't make me scroll all the way back to wherever somebody said something about that shirt somebody said something about a shirt for sarge what was that i have no clue all right well then i guess we're gonna have to ask so what was your favorite thing to show us now um the people and not just like i mean yes meeting sarge and noxious and fine ape and all the other ones i'd never met before roll call yeah, that was great, Dano. I don't want to leave anybody out, but that was great. The ones I'd never met before. And then getting to see the ones I have met before and stuff again and stuff, that was great. But just like the people at the show, and especially my highlight of the day was that little old lady just wanting me to come record her. I mean, that was literally my highlight. I just enjoyed that so much. that She was so excited about it and just super excited. So that was really my highlight was the people. I don't know what to say. I think we got our Menthia still, right? But uh, with all these hippie answers, I'm glad that this show takes place in Oklahoma, not Colorado or California. <laughs> I know what have some kind of gun channels drum circle going on. Um, our Menthia, did you answer this one yet? What was your favorite thing show? You sleeping? My mic's still on. She could be. She could be. She could be chatting, but I know she went to the room. I was gonna say. I think we're 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 keeping people up at this point. It's almost well. It's eleven o'clock here, so it's got to be one a.m. for y'all. Yeah. Yeah, I got to get up at five thirty to drive in, or yeah, five thirty or so to drive in in the morning. So I'm gonna bail pretty quick. <clears throat> All right. So probably, then probably should call it. Yeah. Yeah, with that, I want to say again, thanks for everybody for jumping in. We now know what it's like to have like a third person, right? I wish I could have been there, but at least now we know what it's like to have somebody running a show from outside. 
which obviously is a little easier with all having handicap of not having the uh, live ability. Um, but anyway, thanks for jumping in. We also had a chance to sit rep and we can use this as, you know, one of the things to show the, the promoters, the show that, uh, you know, and for all the people that are interested in doing this kind of stuff, there's no rules. There's no directions. We're making this stuff up. You're watching us make this up and you're watching the people who are doing it. And, uh, there's no, you know, you must be this high to enter. We don't have no thousand sub limit. Our goal is to encourage anyone who wants to participate in this conversation to uh, grab the phone out of your pocket, realize that it's both a keyboard and a camera and a uh, microphone, and you can use it in all three of those or any of those combinations and do what everybody else is doing uh, for fun and profit. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Uh, join us live tomorrow. I'll uh, quirk, gizzard, early mornings. How come I can't ever remember the name of your morning show? What's your morning show called, Gary? Early bird. Early bird, thanks. I'm gonna court the early bird, and if you guys wanna go live, feel free. Yeah, you um, go right ahead and take it over. And I'll just make a room like this for anybody that wants to jump in at the beginning of the show. And then perhaps if everyone's around, we can uh, do something like this in the evenings or not. But uh, appreciate everybody giving us you know, an effort to put some structure to it all and uh, to uh, show a good example for anybody who comes next to, uh, to do better. Right? A jerk with a motorcycle. So uh, with that, we'll probably chat a little bit off here. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching and listening.